Okay, I'll get the camera adjusted here. Hopefully you can see what I am doing. It's really hot. So I'm not going to run the lathe until this evening. And I've got cool demos coming. Well, as you know, I'm not selling the machine for a variety of reasons. And uh, one of the reasons is I was informed that the inch metric gearbox option is $30,000. So I'm not going to sell this lathe for uh, the price of a gearbox in 2000. It's just plain not for sale. And besides, some jobs came up and uh, I'll probably make more money on this side. You know. Okay, so I'm going to put this uh, Travadile back on. I mean, I'm that old school. And I don't need a DRO, okay? I can put 10 indicators on stuff and I'll show you how I do that. But I'm going to set this on here. Okay. I've gone through how to set these up before, so I'll just stick this on here so I don't drop it on the floor. Don't drop it. <clears throat> yeah, this is the old Travadile. There I caught it. I got one more to put in. I hope you're all doing well and staying cool. That's the ticket. Okay. So, I'm going to go through this machine. I'm going to top up the oils. I'm going to make all the adjustments. And get it ready to work. You know, I, I have to laugh. I was looking at my video and I says, yeah, you adjust the belt with the machine running full speed. That's millwright stuff. That's right. Okay, that's no right. Okay, I got that on there, it's not going to fall off. And, oh, okay, so I use this for longitudinal. And let me take the camera off here. Okay, for my cross feet. Now, this is where I don't like DROs, and particularly on this machine. And the problem is the tailstock here, there's in, in this wide cross slide and the way it is and all that. You need every bit of room here. Then over here, um, I, I've used these machines with uh, the uh, scale on either side. And it's like a bummer on either side. And I just don't need it. I mean, look at those dials, man. Wow. You know that? See, so you loosen that, and they rotate at different rates. Just nice. And the screws are precision. So this is perfectly good for me to one half thousandths tolerance. So if I need more than that, this is what I do here. I'm going to wipe that off and polish it. I got this. Um, let's look at it. Uh, no, this is not a Monarch SS3. I just whacked it out on a Bridgeport a long time ago. It's just a chunk of steel that fits on the um, taper attachment tongue. I took the rear cover off and threw it away. Well, it's somewhere in a box. I made a rear plate here. See that? And it's got wipers in it. See, I don't like moving this till I wipe everything down. But there's a... Uh, um, felt wiper in here. This is not stock. I made this. They'd have a cover and I believe no wiper. But maybe a wiper in the cover. I have to look at it. I can't remember. I think it does. But anyway, you can't do this with that. And Monarch had an accessory and I believe it sat on this side for the cross slide. It had 10th indicator and I believe turret ah uh, micrometers for, for different stops, but it used a tenth indicator and hard inch had the same kind of thing. So that is what I have done. I have made this little thing and put it back here. I can slide it up here for my finish cut. See? Let me get it up here. 
and I can dial it in. And I found this tenth indicator is perfectly fine for that. But I've got the, uh, and I haven't had to use it, but I went and got one, is a uh, high discrimination mayor parking meter once. I can't even remember what it is, but it's so sensitive I don't use it. But I can hit plus or minus a tenth on this machine as per the Kinemental instructions with their tooling and stuff on jig bores. And uh, so anyway, I applied the jig bore technique, but it's an old technique that's been used on lathes and jig bores by old timers. Just happened to be printed by uh, Kinemetal sometime, I think, uh, 1980s for the, uh, uh, their Romicron uh, boring head system. Okay, so that's where that's at. That's what I base the uh, two-step high accuracy thing I do. So this is what I do. I use this to adjust for the last two cuts. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take you through that and show you. Now, one of the reasons I'm keeping this lathe here, and it's just, <laughs> I just go, man, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad it, it didn't go out the door. And, you know, I know a lot of people are, uh, we're looking at this thing, but you should have jumped on it. And uh, let's see, what does my welder say about things like that? Well, yeah, when you snooze, you lose. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good luck finding another one like this. This one will probably never hit the market again. Okay. It's got an old ornery guard that's got some stuff left in. I'm actually feeling pretty good. I, I think it's been a, uh, just over five years since my last surgery. And I tell you, a surgery is a real blow. You know, I had 11 of them. I thought I had seven. But my wife, who is an RN, uh, informed me, no, you, you've had 11, and uh, I'm not supposed to be here, is what my doctor said. But here I am. <laughs> I'm having fun. And I'm glad a lot of you enjoy picking up the little things that I can do with this machine. And one of the things, I, I, I have to laugh at myself, and I know, <laughs> it, it, you know, is uh, I can hit extreme high accuracy on materials that I've practiced on. So <laughs> if you, something comes in that uh, I'm not used to, it, it, it's really a problem, you know, and I have to do some testing. And it, it's uh, what I do, uh, just in short, is I have this uh, tool and cutter grinder here. And uh, this has kind of gone away in the 1980s. and. Uh, there's, there's so many inserts available now, but uh, I don't want to buy them because I got a tool and cutter grinder. And uh, <laughs> I, buy, I buy the ones that uh, really hog metal off and, uh, you know, I, I kind of like some threading inserts and stuff like that. But for the high accuracy, I uh, use uh, Micro 100, you know, turn in a straight piece. Uh, micro 100 carbide uh, AR tools, and then I shape them on the cutter grinder, okay? If, if you haven't been following along. So, what I gotta do is get that set up and uh, get the thing tuned up. And I gotta do this uh, for you guys that have these and show. Uh, the uh, DD quick method of, <laughs> of setting uh, uh, these here. Oh, and I want to uh, remind you, uh, you can put little plugs in here, but I just put a piece of that old scotch friction tape on there. You can kind of see where it is, and then I just rip it off and put some fresh on there. I don't know. It can, it'll keep spiders out of there, I guess. So it probably uh, should be that way. So this machine um, has a whole bunch of little functions, and we've got this speed compensation, and uh, we got this max speed to set. Then over here... I'm going to explain the other functions of the machine, like quick slowdown, and uh, um, how that works. And right here is the uh, uh, quick slowdown relay. 
And on earlier machines, you'll see it as a big round coil. And they, you know, it's kind of weird. They move stuff around in, the, in this electrical compartment over the years. And uh, uh, a while back, uh, a guy I know got the, uh, the first year, 1960. And it's uh, really kind of simple uh, looking inside. And it seemed to operate exactly the same. But uh, that machine was pretty interesting. It had very, very low hours. And uh, the, the good news is, is it's possible to find really good uh, 10 E's in good shape. You know, there's a, they made enough of them, like 8,000 or something like that, and of the 10 E square dial. Uh, I remind you that Axelson had a production of uh, 5,000 total weights. <laughs> and I think Monarch made 10 times more in the 50 of, of, of thousands. And uh, some weights like the rivet uh, uh, 1020s. I knew a fellow down in uh, uh, Ontario, California years ago that uh, uh, was buying and selling them. Those in the Knight, Knight Miller. I would like to get one of those Knight Millers. But the uh, rivets, I don't think the serial numbers reach 600. So that, <laughs> that's something to consider on these machines. And he said to me, he goes, you, 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 you'll win the lottery before you find a rivet in good shape. And there was one here in Walla and I believe it uh, still exists over on the coast, just uh, minty. And it took me years uh, to find out what the guy did with it. And what he did, he modified the hardened spools in hydraulic valves. And uh, they do that to uh, kind of save equipment if it's doing something that kind of eating itself up they can kind of modify the valve so it doesn't slam or something like that and speaking of slamming how do i do it on time okay now it was pointed out to me i i don't like to get into other drives other than the uh, the factory drive and if if i got a a, a module drive like this um I, I would get a hold of the factory and see if they could uh, sell me all this stuff and the tube board here, see? And the other stuff, because they do those um, um, inverter, you know, AC inverter uh, is the new thing to do. And the reason for that is it's a lot less maintenance. But uh, you know, for hobbyist or just a small shop guy, or the guy that likes to tinker with them, these uh, two uh, drives are perfectly fine. And I actually enjoy tinkering with it. And uh, I want to point out uh, some of the little pinch points that are likely to cause problems with them. And I think uh, that might be useful to you that have them. Now, one of the funny things, uh, 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 when I when I sat Robert's yard over there and there was that South Bend Heavy Ten and I, I go man I should pick that up. The reason for that is and uh, I'm not kidding you. If I picked up that lathe and I got it working, I know some people around here have these ten double E's that do not run, and um, the guys around here like to fiddle with rifles and stuff like that. And uh, those little South Bend Heavy Tens are better better for those guys than the Monarch 10 E. So in the fact that the Heavy 10, the last one I had, I traded it to uh, Bernie here that worked at a Continental Can for my uh, old 10 E. I did, you know. I traded a South Bend Heavy 10 that was running for uh, uh, that old uh, worn one that I needed to do a few things. But I could do that now. Uh, I could trade a South Bend Heavy 10 that runs for one of these old things that don't run because uh, people want stuff to run and there's a real barrier <laughs> with this thing. So uh, I'm going to work on that and talk about that, uh, those things. So uh, this evening I'm going to um, fire this up when it's cool. Now it, it's probably 100 degrees in here right now. 
and the machine's designed to run at 68 degrees. So I've had this machine uh, a lot of years, and a couple of times when it got hot in the shop, the air conditioner quit or something, I've had this thing shut down from uh, being overheated. But it's like, uh, it was when I was threading, and uh, that's kind of disconcerting because you lose the dynamic breaking. <laughs> so you got to keep an eye on things, and it's um, uh, extremely precision, but actually very durable, as people have noticed, noted about uh, vacuum tubes. You just got to know a few little things, and uh, I plan on hanging around on YouTube for a while, uh, as long as able, I guess, as long as people will watch I turn the camera on. Something like over five, 560 videos. You know, I, I actually didn't plan that. I just uh, out here doing stuff and uh, turn the camera on. I go, this might be interesting. And I know a lot of it's boring, but uh, this is how I learned things after uh, school I went to. and uh, Actually, it was an apprentice at the Harley Davidson dealership because you had to be a, a, a mechanic for two years before you could go to the factory school and be certified. And he had to be okayed by the um, regional representative. Boy, a lot's changed in that industry anyway. So, I don't know. They tell me there's not very many people left that can operate this machine. I hope to kind of pass on a little bit. Okay, I'll be back. You guys have a good day. I'll be back tonight.